Big, big applause for Denitza. Hey. Hello, everyone. My name is Denitza, and I'm a co-founder of Propi. So today we started talking about the fundamentals of um, what we call the new decentralized society, talking about the Bitcoin. I will talk a little bit more what happened last year. So last year can be described as the year of the RC20 boom, the ICO boom. Well, it's connected, of course, with the forks, with a lot of hacks. Uh, and uh, we actually saw that um, the blockchain space is not developed yet. It's quite immature. But at the same time, it disrupted one industry, and that's the VC funding industry. At least our company is based in Silicon Valley, and uh, we know that in 2016, no one was touching blockchain, or there were two or three funds. And this year, everyone is a crypto fund or they claim to understand that. So according to some researchers, 5% of the token sales last year was scams. To some other, 85% were scams. But uh, let's talk about more about those who were the biggest ones. They were actually using the ERC-20 standard to create better standard. These are the new blockchain, better than Bitcoin, better than Ethereum. Some of them may succeed, some of them maybe will fail, but the truth is we need maybe two or three years in order to see something out of them. We, we saw those vulnerabilities in uh, Ethereum already, because it's, let's say, a little bit more complicated case than Bitcoin blockchain. So, and it's still not matured. So um, I, would, I would wait until I do some bets on the new blockchains, actually. And at the same time, um, we have more crypto funds, as I told you now, than actually the promising project they invest in. So what's going on in the market? It's a bit bubblish. It's getting uh, some money are getting into projects that probably wouldn't exist one year from now or two, year from, uh, two years from now. And uh, oops. There was some research that 90% uh, uh, of people are checking this website every day if they're token holders. How often does anyone check it every, every day here? Okay, once a week? Okay, so probably you're not fans of this website, but something that's happening again in the last year, it's getting more and more manipulated. It's really easy to create a token now with ERC-20 standard. It's easy to create big amount of supply, small amount of price, and such events like this one can happen. Of course, the team of CoinMarketCap is taking care to take away those, but still. Um, kind of, um, there is no point of uh, talking about infrastructure and uh, what's going on now if there is no real life application of those, uh, of those, um, let's say, infrastructural projects. And um, what I wanted to talk today is that there are already some interesting aspects, interesting projects working on this. For example, I uh, heard today someone talking about identity and uh, KYC. So we already saw that Uport is doing quite well. Um, I was uh, two weeks ago at Consensus. There was this beer by Civic that is doing this verification of your age. And some things that are actually making sense more to the mass people that don't understand decentralization at all. Um, our company is working with a lot of people from the real world, from the real estate, and I will talk a little bit more, but they don't really care about decentralization. They care about efficiency. They care like how my life would be easier after this. They don't really want to know what's behind, and, uh, but they already know what's that, and they ask, and they go to event, ask us, want education. So I believe we are at that stage. And uh, just because I'm more or less expert in real estate, I will give you our example, but my plea is uh, to think about all other examples that surround us. So real estate market is um, the biggest, uh, real estate is the biggest asset class in the world. At the same time, only one out of three people around the world can claim property rights. This leads to actually the biggest debt capital in the world is in real estate. 
I can give you an example with, um, let's say, the Haiti natural disaster let uh, millions of people without the right to claim their property. Same happened to more developed countries, like in Cyprus, for example, there were some, um, you know, this uh, war thing uh, in 20th century. It also left, to, left people homeless or people without their, the right to say, this is mine. Actually, in developed countries, like in US, there are even more problems. It's like uh, around one trillion annually is, lot, is lost in um, the so-called fire um, wire frauds that are happening when someone is buying property. Actually, at the end, the ownership is transferred to someone else because of the old middleman in, in this transaction process and uh, let's say the social engineering hacking part of that. So these problems in real estate um, are kind of, can be resolved to some extent, not of course all, with the blockchain technology. So, uh, okay, see really vividly. I just wanted to show uh, in a case when you buy a property um, in US and you are a foreigner, you go through all those middlemen and there are a lot of um, risks um, caused by delays, caused by the point where the communication is happening on email, caused by, uh, let's say, all the rules and regulations going on in order to protect this, caused by... Mm, involvement of title insurance companies that are actually redundant if we if we think about it uh, so all those problems that exist uh, in real estate are caused just because real estate is still in 20th century at the end of the day you have this uh, centralized registry that has everything on paper and you wait tremendous amounts of time in order to receive your new document that you're an owner so just to explain a little bit more what blockchain technology can do for the real estate world and it actually to change the lives of uh, pretty much everyone, it's, uh, it can be used for property sale, something that pro property our company is tapping on. It can be used for lease, for mortgage mortgages and uh, for Internet of Things build buildings, data sharing and smart cities. So. Um, here again, I just give, I, uh, I told that may, maybe you haven't told about it, so I just want to give some more examples. So we work with title deed transfer and transaction management. This is something that Propi is working on. Uh, and I would share where are we now, because it's kind of really, really tough thing to achieve. Um, there is an opportunity to do title financing and, of course, uh, to fund constructions and development companies using uh, all those um, applications on the blockchain that are like infrastructural. So, as we discussed today, um, blockchain has some limitations. They might be solved, might be not, but as of today, it's kind of slowly and a little bit costly to buy your coffee, someone mentioned today. Uh, uh, but uh, it's kind of cheap and quick and more secure than before to buy real estate, not only with the payment, but actually connecting with all the participants, signing the documents online without leaving your home, and in the end receiving the title deed. So actually, that's what we built, and we already have some traction on that. We are building a global decentralized title registry, at the moment based on Ethereum, in the future, who knows what, but um, we are using uh, Ethereum uh, at the moment. And we connect all the participants in a transaction platform that's already live, so uh, actually, seller, buyer, broker, they interact online in order to sign the documents and the payment to be done. And in the end, we record the new ownership on our ledger. But what is our breakthrough so far is that, I will probably skip this one, is that we already um, 
convinced two governments to start work with, working with us and recognized each of these transactions as valid, as a proof of ownership. So if something happens with this piece of paper, that's kind of useless, but they still want to have it. If something bad happens with that, at least you have a proof, uh, a proof on chain. And this is actually part of our first two pilot programs. We have a little bit more pilot programs in our pipeline. Soon we are going to, in, to do our first transactions uh, in Europe as well. So um, in European Union, actually, no, because this one is in Europe too. So um, what else is going on uh, in the real estate world? Um, this month it would be the first on-chain auction for real estate. It would be for historical property in Rome. That's kind of a trophy trophy asset. It would be, if, if you are interested, you can watch it. If you are interested, you can bid. But, uh, but it would be done uh, with, uh, in a decentralized way and with crypto. Um, so first players in our space, uh, some of uh, you might know already Bitfurry, they're the big mining company, but also they have their, uh, they built a ledger in Georgia. Uh, Velux Red that uh, are um, kind of working on this ownership transfer as well. Chrome away working with Sweden. We saw some corporate players trying to do something. It's kind of still really, um, really early ages, but um, w what we've been discussing today is like pure decentralization. Well, in the real estate world and Actually, in the real world, you still need some adoption from the government, bad or not bad, that's the reality, because there are still people out there who, who will not trust the blockchain. So we cannot take this right from them to go to traditional way. In our case, probably the disruption will come 10 to 20 years from now. So far, these are the most innovative countries in the real estate sector adopting the blockchain technologies. As I told you, we and our partners are working in all of them. And um, I think that's all for me. I would be happy to answer more questions if you have so such. Anyone? Don't be shy. <laughs> I know it's a little bit out of the blue topic, but still. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's exactly what we um, want to talk about in the afternoon. Right? Okay. Real life things and any. There's yeah, a question. Uh, Christoph. Um, if you make a property transaction on a blockchain and something goes wrong in a real life, you have some way to go to some person or to some yes. uh, authority to, to make it backward. Can you do anything with a blockchain property transaction to uh, rewind it? You just talk to Vitalik. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good to Vitalik joke. Uh, no, uh, it's actually what, what you have at the moment it's all the participants are included in the transaction. In the end, you receive this title deed that's recognized by the, by the government, let's say. And um, um, if there was some point of fraud during that, that you want to go back, it's actually you do another transaction to go back and you prove. At the moment, these countries we are working on to recognize this is a proof and it serves like a proof in, in, in a court. But um, I don't really understand what problems you're talking about. Because it's typically, this eliminates a lot of problems. It's more about something like uh, when Fundamentally, I, you cannot I go sign back. a transaction accidentally and someone is the owner of my house. This is the uh, basic problem. You mean if for the title deed, private key is lost or Maybe stolen? Maybe something or stolen, yes. Someone stole my private key and yes. runs away with my yes. house. Or that's, why, that's why I said that in the real estate world, the whole peer-to-peer -peer tra transfer of ownership will come maybe 10 to 20 years from now and we still have to rely on centralized authorities ah. one way or another. Okay. But it okay. still wouldn't 
decrease tremendous the time that you buy properties and uh, you acquire and even trade it. Okay. What I've seen, uh, these documents were first printed out after the transaction was uh, committed to the blockchain. Now, if somebody they were first on the blockchain actually, and second. Yes. <laughs> so, but then they were signed. So, if somebody would say, "Ha ha, now we got the transaction," but I'm, I'm not going to sign it, that would be one of the cases I would look at. Well, this is actually this one, like the hash of those transactions. I want to go back just to show. Well, this everything else happened before these documents were signed and uh, let's say uh, put by the government, but the payment is done as well. So like there is no going back. So this is the and final the, document. And the document was signed online already um, and everything was done. So instantly everything was recorded on chain and afterwards people need to wait still let's say two weeks to get this paper well what we envision in the future is that uh, not in the future but really near term in vermont they don't even have to wait for this paper and this uh, type of signatures so this is more or less a receipt this is like more or less uh, um, people to feel comfortable with what's coming up but it's like governments already recognized it, so. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, thank you. More question in the back? Ah, okay. Well. Can I take this one? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, the who next. are your competitors and why do you think you're going to win? Mm -hmm. I don't think we need to win the whole real estate market. That's the biggest asset class in the world, as I said. And real estate has so many verticals out there. So we are focusing on residential transfer of ownership and on residential real estate. We are also um, um, we are receiving all the time uh, inquiries from people around the world, developers, to tokenize their properties. Actually, we haven't been touching there yet, but uh, we decided to start with the first project. We are actually going to do the first Caribbean tokenization just because it made sense for us and it kind of co covers what we are doing. So our vertical is like residential and uh, we are helping international buyers who are traditionally buying remotely. So this is our first market. And you still, last time I checked, uh, the, the the project and I talked to your CEO, most of your work was on deeds. On title deeds. Yeah. Yes. Are you, st uh, are you planning to extend that roadmap? I'm, I mean, I'm sorry I arrived quite late in, the sh in, the, in your presentation, but what type of um, like roadmap do you have in place uh, post the deeds? Well, the title deeds and decentralized title registry is a backbone of of something that's really huge. It's like all our property rights are recording on something that is centralized and property happens to, to build it right now. We believe that more companies will jump on this because it's decentralized. Our first use case is property.com. That's the real estate marketplace for foreigners. That's what I talked about, this uh, automation, purchase payment, residential. And this is the first use case. So what we are showing is like, hey, you can actually use something that's a kind of infrastructural project, but for something that's making a change right now, even when the technology is not kind of really, really matured for mass adoption. And in our roadmap, you can see that uh, we are evolving with the real estate marketplace for foreigners, and we are evolving on the, the other part, the backbone, so. Thanks. One more question in the back. And I think that should be the last for today, for this talk. Thanks, Mr. Uh, very good presentation. Um, the concept makes a lot of sense in terms of actually reducing uh, all the friction within the system and speed your transactions, but I'm not entirely certain on how your company actually makes its own revenue. Is it through? Oh, we are making revenue from the marketplace, property.com. And for every transaction we charge, uh, we charge a commission that's 0 0.2. Okay. So this is like, and uh, this is how we made from the first use case of this decentralized title registry. Okay, great. Thanks. If you have more questions to Denitza, the news is we have a new panel tomorrow, Women in Blockchain, and Denitza will be on it. So if you've forgotten a question, ask her tomorrow. Or later. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.